So let's ask the following question. Is the following linear transformation injective? Is it surjective? Okay, so let's describe a solution of this. And actually, there are many solutions. So solution. Now, the first thing to know is that we're told it's a linear transformation, so we don't have to check that. And being a linear transformation is quite powerful. Another thing I'd like us to note is that t, even though it's not explicitly stated in the exercise, I'm assuming it's a function from r3 to r3. Okay, so that's my assumption. Now, what's important here is that the domain and range are both three dimensional. So that means if we're injective, we're necessarily surjective and vice versa. If we're surjective, then we're necessarily injective. So it's enough to check injectivity. So let's maybe type that out. So since T is a linear transformation whose domain and range have equal dimension, then injectivity, or let's phrase this, then T is injective if and only if T is surjective. Okay. Moreover, T is injective. This is because it's a linear transformation if and only if its kernel is trivial. Okay, so let's find the kernel of T. So, so a vector V is in the kernel of T if and only if t of v equals to zero. And I'll add another little thing that's kind of obvious. And v is in the domain of t. This is pretty obvious. And let's see what that means. Well, if v is x, y, z, that means that 2x minus 6y, 4y minus 12z, x plus z is equal to zero. So the question is if there's only the trivial solution. So that's if and only if 2x minus. So we're, we're calculating the kernel, OK? If the kernel is 0, right? 0 is always in the kernel of a linear transformation, right? t of 0 is always equal to 0. So this equals to 0, 0, 0. And when do two vectors of the same dimension equal one another if they're equal component wise. So what we're going to end up having here is a homogeneous system of equations. So we could skip a step right now. I'm not going to skip, but at some point, you know, maybe it's wise to skip. So let's copy this down here. That equals zero. That equals to zero. And that also equals to zero. Notice that I aligned the x's, y's, and z's. Just a little bit, it'd be a little bit clearer. So this is equal to zero. And same goes for everything else. Now, if, you, if we knew, know about determinant, then we could solve this using a determinant. Just depends if we've heard of determinant yet. Anyways, we have to solve this system. Or do we have to solve it? We're actually trying to find out if there's exactly one solution or not. Let's start out by trying to solve it, OK? But honestly, we can stop quite soon. So I want to swap the first and third row, because I don't like this two up here. Or alternatively, I could multiply um, this row by 1 half. But I prefer swapping. It just seems a little easier to me. But again, you might find a shorter way to do this. This is just, It's a matter of taste. OK, so we didn't change the center row. So I can just copy that. I'll just make it a little bit easier to read. And the zeros are going to remain the same. 
right? Swapping zero and zero is just not going to make a difference. Some people don't write the zeros of the home homogeneous part, like over here. I like to write it, but it's always good to check what is valid in the course that you're studying. But I like to write these zeros. Okay, now let's use this one over here to turn this into zero. Well, there's nothing to do here. It's already zero. And to turn this into zero. So let's do that. So I'm going to do an elementary row operation. And I want to change the two. Now the two is in row number three. So let's convert row three to the row three minus two times one or more precisely, 2 times R1. Okay, cool. So again, I'm trying to calculate the kernel. If the kernel is trivial, and maybe we don't know what a trivial kernel is, right? It's very hard to prove that a kernel is trivial if we don't know what it is. Well, the kernel is trivial if it's equal, if the only vector that we substitute in t that gives us zero is the zero vector, then the kernel's trivial, right? Like, let's look at this. Let's look at this. If I were to put zero here, zero here, and zero, zero here, then this would be zero, zero, zero. This means that zero is in the kernel, but maybe zero is not in the kernel, right? If we had a different example, say t, x, y, z, excuse me, zero is always in the kernel. Maybe we have some example of a non-trivial vector that's in the kernel. For instance, this example, it's easy to guess that if I put t, 1, 1, and z, I can put anything, 0, a million, whatever, t, 1, 1 gives me 1 minus 1, 0, 0, which is 0, 0. So this is not injective because we have a non-trivial vector in the kernel. But this is not our exercise. So let's... And now you can hear the linear algebra dog. I have a neighbor that whose dog does not like linear algebra and he starts barking anytime I, I teach linear algebra. It's a true story. Anyways, he's quiet now. Okay, so let's get back over here. Let's stay in focus. So this will be zero. That's how we chose our elementary row operation. And now over here we'll have negative six minus two times zero, which is just negative six. So that hasn't changed. And over here we're going to have zero minus 2 times r1. r1 is 1, so we'll have negative 2, and over here we'll have 0. Okay, I was hoping for something simpler, but it's not bad. And, okay, let's change this row. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to have only one solution. But let's, one solution, which is the 0 solution. So now let's turn this 4 into a 1. So I'm going to do R2 becomes 1 quarter R2. So we changed, we only changed the second row. And how did we change it? Well, we divided it by 4. This is a 4 over here. It might be hard to read. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12, negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. And now let's use this negative 1 to destroy the negative 6. Okay, so let's do, oh cool, we made a really cool arrow, it's always nice to make a cool arrow. So we're going to change the negative 6, so that means we need to do R3 becomes R3 plus 6R1. Great. So what have we changed? We've only changed the third row. And that means we're going to get uh, 0, 0. And now we have to be careful. So this should be negative 2 plus 6 times negative 3, if I'm not mistaken. But we really need to focus here because it's easy to make a mistake. Again, negative 2 minus 6 times negative 3. That's uh, negative 2 plus 18. That's negative 16 and a 0. So yeah, we're only going to have one solution here. I can see this already. Okay, there's many ways to explain this, for instance. This has one solution. If we want to continue just a little bit more, I can do... Right, what we can do is the following. I mean, this point's obvious that there's one solution. So R3 becomes 
negative 1 over 16 bar 3. So that means I only changed the last the last row. So here we have zeros, and instead of negative 16, we have 1 and a 0. And now I can get rid of these. Or honestly, I could rewrite these as e equations, right? Because this is just x plus, excuse me, x plus z equals to 0, uh, y plus, or excuse me, minus 3z, minus 3z equals 0, and z equals to 0. So this gives us z equals 0, and if we substitute z here, we'll get x and y is equal to 0. And then we're done, right? So we get x equals y equals z equals 0. And that just means that the kernel of t, right, because we just calculated a typical vector on the kernel of t, and the kernel of t is trivial. Right, I, pref I, I also denote it like this. Let me just show you a mistake. If you write zero, this is a mistake. The kernel is not a vector. It's a set with a vector in it. And more precisely, it's not just a set, it's a very special set. It's a, a vector space, okay? A kernel, the kernel and also the image of a linear transformation is a vector space. Okay, so let's sum up. So, the kernel of the linear transformation is trivial and the dimension of the domain and range are equal. Therefore, the linear transformation is also surjective. In other words, the given linear transformation is an isomorphism of vector spaces, period. And the most important part of our solution, let's not forget this, wait. Happy linear algebra. And let's just correct this over here. So in other words, the given linear transformation is an isomorphism of vector spaces. In other words, it's injective and surjective. Let's just check this. The kernel of the linear transformation is trivial and the dimension of the domain range are equal. Therefore, the linear transformation is also surjective. Yes, everything's correct now. I had a typo. Okay, great. Have an amazing day and see you in the future.